Am I the astronaut for not showing up for my birthday dinner at a nice restaurant, knowing everyone was waiting for me, and my parents had to pay a deposit for the table? Oof. I'm 16 male, the second oldest of four. My older sister, 18, has Down syndrome and is medically complex with complex needs. She also has food allergies. My younger sister, 13, has a host of food allergies, and some of them are very serious, and she's also on the spectrum. Then we have my younger brother, 11, and he has a lot of medical issues related to food and allergies that go along with it. We always try to make sure places are accessible for them, especially because my older sister is in a wheelchair. This does mean I can be overlooked. It does mean making sacrifices or accepting that things will never be as far as it would be for a kid in my family with less extra slash special needs. I'm used to not getting my favorite dishes and I'm used to not getting my top pick for vacations because my parents don't think it's it's accessible enough or autism friendly enough. I'm used to my siblings never getting turned down for that kind of stuff. After a while, it became something I expected. I was lucky that my maternal grandparents tried to make up for it when they when they could. And my best friend's family would also include me in their family for stuff like meals out. My favorite restaurant in our city is this Indian place. My favorite dish is their samosas. I never get to eat there with my parents and siblings, and we never get takeout from there because it's not deemed safe for all my siblings. Sometimes that stinks, especially when my parents proclaim they always get their kids' favorite food from their favorite restaurant for their birthdays each year. This year, my parents made a big deal over me turning 16, and they told me to pick my favorite place for us to have a family dinner for my birthday. A family dinner that included extended family. I told them my favorite place, and they told me that wouldn't work. I asked if they wanted my favorite place or a place catered to my siblings. They asked me if I didn't want to cater to my siblings, and I said no. They asked where I wanted to go. I said the Indian place. They gave me one of those looks and said they would give me one more time to think. A couple of weeks later, they asked me where I wanted to eat for my birthday, and I told them my answer had not changed. They asked me if I could really enjoy my birthday, knowing it wasn't accessible and safe for my siblings to eat there, and I said yes, since it's meant to be my birthday, and they wanted me to say my favorite restaurant. They told me that they would book the family favorite and went ahead and did that. The family favorite has nothing I actually like. I just tolerate it. They had everything planned, invited everyone, and when the evening came for the dinner, I just didn't go. My parents are furious with me. I had everything taken for a week, and they planned to continue the punishment in some way. My grandparents defended me, but my parents said I was rude. Am I the ass cannot? Oh, uh, okay. Top comment here. NTA. I'm so sorry. I hope your grandparents or BFF celebrated you. Just know in two years you can escape unless you can go to your grandparents or BFF to live there now. And they will wonder why you don't want to be with them anymore or take care of your siblings when they can't anymore. The more fair alternatives would be to order a takeout on birthdays so you can get your favorite and they can get safe foods and you can eat home or wherever you can host your group as a whole. Or maybe the parent takes the birthday kid for an outing and meal of their choice one on one time and cake back at home with the family. I'm sorry, OP. Happy birthday. Okay, this is, this is, the end here is where my brain was at. I'm like, as a parent, if you have a kid that is, that is outwardly expressing frustration at this situation, and I understand why they do it the way that they do as a whole. I get it. They have, they have all these plates to spend and to make sure that everybody's taken care of, care of as a clan, as a group. Um, and they don't they don't want something to harm the village. I understand why they're doing what they're doing. However, th- this was an all or nothing kind of thing. It was it was you pick somewhere that works for everybody or or we just don't have something. Really, they didn't even give that option. It was you're going to pick somewhere that works for everybody. Where do you want to go? We'll give you one more chance. The question wasn't really where do you want to go? The question was where are you going to tolerate going? For the good of the family. OP has some clear frustration with that and voiced it. Here's where it gets squirrely as a parent. If you have a kid who is obviously in a in a position to be overlooked because it's the one non-special needs kid that they have, who's voicing this kind of frustration and this desire to do something truly for them, uh, even, even voicing the acceptance that they aren't going to be able to do that with their siblings. Like, want that. They want that. How much more clear of a signal do you need that you need to do that for them with some one on one time? This needed to be and it was a huge opportunity to have some one on one time to be like, you know what? We're going to find somebody to to hang out with the rest of the kids and and the two of us are going to take just you and we're going to go do this thing. That was the play. That was the call. 
and it's it shouldn't be a hard call if they are looping an extended family for the party that can be the after party and guess what some of the extended family can jump in and help look after everybody else while you guys are out for this short dinner for what an hour i'm sure they could figure it out the fact that there was no effort put into that to, to actually do something truly for you is where this happens and, and again i understand i i can't imagine having a a family dynamic like this where you had that extra level of complication families like having families with multiple kids are or it's difficult it is very difficult it's difficult to balance everything add special needs into that mix i cannot imagine how complicated every freaking day life is for them however when it is black and white like this and when you have one of your children saying this is what i want i understand the ramifications i am telling you i want this it's not a cry for help anymore. It's not a, it's not a cry for for love anymore. It is it is it's a warning shot, right? It is blatant. Could it be any more clear that your kid feels overlooked if they're willing to do that? Could it be any more clear? I'm sure they're stressed and I'm sure they're dealing with a whole bucket of shit on the daily. But this was an easy one. This was T-ball. It was boop, right there. All they had to do was smack it. And instead, they're like, eh, we're going to do something completely different and went ahead and scheduled it and just completely ignored their kids wishes altogether. All the while, still bragging to everybody that they always get the kids what they want from their favorite restaurant for all their birthdays, blah, 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 blah. Except that's not really the case. OP, you are NTA here. I, I understand, though. I understand how difficult it must be for your parents. But they need to understand your frustration and they need to understand that you their burden is not your burden. They have a burden to manage the family. They have a burden to manage, manage multiple people with special needs. They also have a burden to to care for you and to care about you. And yeah, you've been overlooked here. And maybe you need to be a little more clear about that and say, look, when you do this, this is what I understand. This is this is how it translates to me. This is what I feel from this. And I feel like I don't matter. I feel like I don't matter as much as everybody else because their needs get prioritized over mine. Even my on my own birthday, their needs were prioritized over mine. You're only 16. So your dependence on them for this is is has a timer on it. It's not going to be this way forever. You're going to enter the make your own family. Um, phase of life here soon and you'll have the ability to to choose your own destiny here. It sucks. It sucks and, and you're going to carry this with you forever and it's probably going to affect your family dynamic or your relationship with your parents forever and when you have kids, it's going to affect the relationship between your parents and your kids too. So hopefully they get their heads out of their asses and they realize what kind of damage they're actually doing right now. They think they're doing the right thing because they think they're doing the right thing for the tribe as a whole the good of the realm right but as a parent the tribe matters so does the individual those two things are not mutually exclusive 